on what time it is in your country thank you for being here um it is week 10 which is pretty cool because you have made it a very long way so congratulations um i'm going to run through my kind of presentation very quickly i um and then mariam will take over um for the rest of the session from me so this week's career tutorials um we are still calling them career tutorials but at this stage they are not tutorials, they're not exercises any longer. These are actual things that you will use when you are in the job search phase. Um, so I cannot emphasize enough that these have to be professional because these are literally going to be components of getting a job. So I was grading profiles from week nine and a lot of people actually just put random videos in the introductory section of just things that had nothing to do with the actual so i'm not sure if it was a placeholder video um i think that i would have just preferred a an image of your face if you couldn't get that done in time but i just feel like it's not acceptable for you know if you can't get a video done in time that's fine but then just add an image of your face or something because you should treat this as we are people who are trying to hire you so we are trying to look for professional profiles i don't know if i'm making sense i don't know um if you understand the urgency of this i don't know you know what i need to say for you to understand this but it is quite important that you treat this as professional consider these exercises anymore and i will stop now i will stop preaching and start with the um presentation so can you see my screen um okay so there are two exercises quote unquote exercises um the github profile developing a github profile and creating a job ready linkedin profile so you've done the cv you've done the 10 academy profile um all of the information will be in the careers manual the careers manual is updated often enough so continue going through it on a regular basis so that you remain updated with things that you know best practices when it comes to um job searching um i do not really have all that much to say uh for my part i i wrote this part of the careers manual the github profile and code base i'm not entirely sure that i'm pretty sure most of you know more than me about how github works but for this we generally want your github page or profile or whatever it's called to be the place where all your skills are on display um you can't put that much in your cv your cv is limited to like one page your 10 academy profile as there's there's limits there so when it comes to showing off what you can do showing off the projects you have done showing off the skills that you have and speaking the language of the technical recruiters at companies that you will be applying at this is where all of that happens so um your landing page is going to be pretty important um this is kind of um the same as your linkedin profile and cv where you do um you have a um picture of yourself your location um links to your social media if necessary to your linkedin 
um, you know. So this person does not actually have a um, picture of themselves. However, the reason why um, I chose this example is because off the bat, it is prof this profile is organized and easy to read. Um, so when it comes to your landing page, many, um, many recruiters, the first line of defense, if you can call it that, are HR and they might not be part of the technical staff. So that's where you need to have a, a nice landing page that is easy to, to navigate, organized and all of that so that it can pass through the hands of the HR non-technical staff and go over to the technical recruiters who will then take a look at the rest of your work. Um, so having your um, um, most important projects pinned to the top of the page so that those can be, at this point, you should assume that the HR person has handed your CV and your GitHub and all your details over to the technical staff who will now be assessing your technical skills. So then for that, pin your most important projects to the top of the page, the projects that you are most proud of. Um, I know that many people have concerns because um, while doing the 10 Academy profile and CV, they were telling me I'm not happy with the way my project is now. Um, that's understandable. Um, you can go back and improve the quality of your project. There is no, this, um, while this should be treated professionally, the situation of creating all these um, different profiles and CVs, it's not cut and dry. It doesn't end once we are finished grading. You should take the responsibility to go back and improve your um your projects, um, if you feel that you can do that. And it will actually look better for you because I believe that it's called commits. I could be quite wrong, but I believe that your commits are viewable. Um, so the changes you make on your projects. So those are just things you need to think about. They should be treated professionally, but you should also realize that things can be changed. You can go back and forth. It's completely up to you. Um, so providing descriptions of your projects, please do that. Um, like this person has done here. That's pretty cool. Um, I can kind of understand what is happening on here, even though I am not a technical professional. Um, so this is again where you have to consider that it might be a non-technical HR person looking at these things beforehand. Um, yeah, we've got some more um, information. Of course, a professional photo, the skills and experience description, no more than 50 words. Make sure that these things match the information on your CV. Please do not deviate from your CV, um, from the information on your CV. Make sure that things are consistent because it is not going to be great for you to confuse the people you are trying to get a job at. I'm sure you understand that. Um, remember to relate everything that you provide, all the information that you provide related to your track that you have chosen. So any projects that you are most proud of, the most important projects, make sure that um, they are related to the track you have chosen and then pin those to the top of the page. Um, when providing, when writing your description of your skills and experience, this is where you can be more technical so you don't need to add that much information about your soft skills. So you can be more technical here, provide more information on your track, relate everything to your track because you are trying to get a job in the specific track, one of three that we have provided here. Um, so this is up to you. This space from yarn out is up to you. I cannot say it enough times. I'm not a technical professional. I did this 
with a lot of help from a lot of different people, you will most likely understand this better than I ever will. There are templates for um, readme files. Um, so those will show you how to um, build or construct these um, files. Uh, there are all the information that you should provide. Um, something that a lot of people have emphasized for me is that you should provide guides on how to install the code. It's just good manners. Um, at this point, your contact details for, um, provided under each project or in the readme file, acknowledge people and resources who have contributed. It's just, it looks good for recruiters to see that you have acknowledged outside help. Um, the repository structure. You can go through all that here, make it look nice and neat and organized. Make sure that everything is in a logical order. And yeah, I think that I've covered everything. I don't have the capacity to explain things in more detail than that. So are there any questions? Because I will have to drop off this call in a moment so please uh if you have any questions you can raise your hand but i'm sure you guys have a better handle on this than i do so just i'll wait a few moments and then give over to mariam Okay, I think that we are good then. If you guys have any questions be, um, after this, I'm on Slack. Mariam, thank you for taking over for the rest of the session. All right, Kari, thank you. Um, Nick, I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Um, okay, thanks. So some can please let me know if they can see my screen. Okay, yeah, so essentially um, we're almost coming to, can someone just like, um, what's the word? Or mute and just so I can see your screen, so I'm sure. Sorry. Uh, I can see your screen. All right, thanks. Uh -huh. So essentially, well, um, coming to the end of the training, this is week 10. So in two weeks, we're done. So this is where it is important for us to start preparing our application materials. So even when we get to the job search phase, even if we're still building up ourselves, we can still start applying to stuff and just like see how it goes, right? So um, last week you worked on your CV and then your ten academic profile. For CV, I'm sure some of you are already getting feedback, comment on what you should adjust, what you should remove and stuff like that. So this week you're basically going to be um, working on your LinkedIn and your Git up. So if you agree with me, your LinkedIn is almost like an extension of your CV right because if we look at even linkedin itself already has prepared like these sections so like your name your project your work experience education certifications and things like that so like i said it's like an extension of your cv as much as you're trying to limit your cv to like a page so it's not like super busy your linkedin is somewhere you can just like add more things and make it more humanized if that makes sense like add some human touch so it's not like rigid 
And also another thing why LinkedIn is actually good is because sometimes you can shoot shots on LinkedIn. You see like even um recruiters will just put out posts and be like, Oh, um, I have open roles for this, this, this. If you um you if you're interested, put in I'm interested in the chat box. I see I think I see a couple of things like that. And then if you put like I'm interested, they can easily just go to your page and see if you're fit for it. And sometimes even you as um a job seeker, you can shoot shot at recruiters on LinkedIn and just be like, Oh, I I'm not sure. It's not it's not going to be what I'm saying, but it's going to be like a a proper code email just saying, Oh, you're seeking out for this for your role. You don't know if there are if they have open role in the organization or companies and they can then you cannot attach like maybe your portfolio and stuff like that. But you know, by the time they read your message, they um they are automatically tempted to click on the person's name and say, oh, Who is this person? And they can just like see your profile that way and linkedin is just linkedin is just fresh it's just things happen on linkedin you see as much as it's always like rigid it's not like twitter or instagram or facebook where people like do a lot of jokes and stuff linkedin is quite rigid although people joke but like linkedin is just rigid in, if you agree with me but at the same time it does the work a lot of people see jobs on link from linkedin a lot of people make great connections from linkedin too so um, the more optimized your profile is, the more you're likely to um, get like great connection. And by optimize, it pretty much like means that you put like the right keywords when necessary, if that makes sense. So before I talk too much now, let's just get to it. So LinkedIn profile, like I said, is like an extension of your CV. I have two, um, will I say accounts or pages here that I want to use as references. So this is Stephanie, an old friend that I met during camp when I was in SS2, I guess. Yeah, that's shared the second to last thing in high school. So, and then there is this other profile that this Nabil is a graduate from Ten Academy and he's currently the Ten Engineer at Adludio. In the Carras Manual, we already have um a short description of what to include, but I think just going through the profile itself makes more sense. So I can really like touch on this point. So at the top part of the page, a good picture is necessary just so to know who you are. Um, sometimes people include things in their cover, like this area, their cover picture or cover photo. Some people do a lot of, um, let's see what Nabil used. Okay, I don't know what this is, but it looks like luckily it's circuit. I don't know. But some people do like some people do like some customized ones where they can like just put things that their page is known for. I'm sure we've stubborn on account like that. But if you want to leave it blank, it's all good. So your full name, you want to make sure this name is consistent in your CV, um, in your GitHub, in your portfolio, or any, any other place they would find you. So I can put Miriam Musa on my LinkedIn. Then on my CV, I'm going to put Miriam Ayomide, or and then somewhere else they are going to be seeing Miriam Damlola Diget. So he has to rhyme so they know that this is the person, right? And then your title should be, even if you do have like like Stephanie now is a customer engineer at Google Cloud, right? You can just put um data engineer, something like that, even if you don't have a role yet, that kind of thing. So they know where you're coming from or what track you're pursuing essentially. So on that future, a lot of, you can skip this, but essentially what it means is, God, I say essentially a lot. What it means is if you have like blog posts or obviously a lot of um, you guys have been writing stuff for Medium. So you have like blog posts or like some article that you were featured in, or maybe a YouTube video, someone interviewed you, all of those cool stuff, because not everybody's cool here. Yeah. So, you can include things like that here on that feature so people can read things about it, perhaps maybe your work or things like that. Uh, now let's go to the experience. So work experience, just it is in your CV. You want to chip in work experience. I know like for the CV now, because we said we don't want so much talk talk. 
on LinkedIn, there's room for you to add things you want people to know about, even if it's not really like um, relevant to your role. But at the same time, at the same time, I think it's just important to just narrow it to things that really matches your track. So you're not confusing anybody that is looking at your LinkedIn and be like, okay, what exactly are you doing? Are you saying you're a scientist or an engineer? Or so you don't want to confuse whoever is looking through your LinkedIn profile, right? So she has a really good number of experiences. So this, that, that. I think another thing I like about LinkedIn is you can put like evidence of like this work experience. And by evidence, I mean like see this area where it says University of Dundee, right? When she was a student blogger, she added like images of maybe um, things she talked about. So your work experience now, you might want to include maybe images of um, say, a particular tax you did well, or even images of you at work, right? It's, it, just, it just adds to like the evidence. It just makes it look fresh and cool. And then if you agree with me too, we're more of like a visual person. Pictures just attract us, images attract us. So with LinkedIn, under work experiences, people can include images that um, matches with maybe the particular work experience. So say maybe during your work experience that you had like a conference there and you were maybe a speaker, something like that, you might want to like attach images. It makes the profile look dope and stuff like that. So after your work experience, aha, uh -huh, see something like this too. She was a communication and logistics officer. This is an image of her promoting events at stores. Now this is not like compulsory for everybody because maybe not everybody keeps pictures and stuff like that, but I'm just saying it's a bonus. It's it's nice to see. And then for education too, um, University of Dundee, Bachelor's of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, great first class honors. She also talked about um, some of the awards she got. So for each education, if you have just undergrad, you want to include um, your grade, you want to include maybe some achievements right there. Maybe you were the um, class rep, or you are the departmental tutor, or you are the departmental secretary, things like that. You might also want to include any image of anything that is related to, it might even be your convocation image, right? So it's just cool. You might want to just include things to just make it look really nice. Um, so automatically, um, LinkedIn will arrange, depending on the date you put, LinkedIn will arrange it from the most recent to the least recent. So you can put high school things there, but on CV, not necessarily, because obviously I've seen a couple of people put like high school details on their CV. I don't think it's necessary. And you must have been seeing my comments saying remove high school things. But you'll see on your LinkedIn, why not? There is space, so put it. Um, yeah, so for license and certification. So a couple of us obviously have certifications from like different online trainings, courses. So now is the time to brag or show things. So perhaps on your CV, you could only like show four. On LinkedIn, you can show as much as 10. It doesn't really matter. Like it's all good. It, it, it works if that makes sense. So pretty much LinkedIn is just, I don't know, I'm looking for the right word, but LinkedIn just like makes everything easier. But that doesn't mean you should not put like, oh, I want to really show my certifications. You not put things that are not necessary. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there is room on LinkedIn for you to add more information. Then some people that probably did like volunteer roles. So you can include a couple of that. And skills, you can include that. And with skills, you can get like your friends to endorse you. So you can just be like, oh, I right, please, can you? And you, I don't think you have to like force it on them. So they can endorse you if they want. The recommendations to people get records. So Stephanie has received recommendations from a couple of people, about 10 people. And then I think she has given to people too. So this is great. I think afterwards, perhaps after the training, you can even get your tutors to give you a recommendation or even your lecturers from your uni or even people you've met like during your work, your supervisor at work, at a previous workplace, they can give you recommendation. It just boosts. So even when a recruiter just go down and look like, oh, nice, 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 interesting. Some courses too, I want to include that. 
some projects. So these are like the projects that you've done. You might want to, you should include that. Honors and award, why not? Languages, what organizations do you belong to? Association of Software Engineers in Ethiopia, Association of Computer Scientists in Kenya, why not? And, um, I think this interest is based on like the algorithm things that you you like look up most the most and then courses I think this is pretty much just like things that drive you or things like you're interested in that kind of thing so with LinkedIn you can what's the word you can I think there are two types of account there's like a creator account and something like that with the creator account you can put like hashtags of things you're interested in let me try and look for an old friend, not an old friend, a friend from my previous workplace. If this internet will not embarrass me, it will pop up. Okay, uh -huh. this is what I'm talking about. So with your creator's account, you can include like hashtags of things you're interested in. So Gilbert yeah, is a public health um, enthusiast and things like that. So it talks about public health, global health care, things like that. So you you can decide to put interested in hashtag web3 um big data data science things like that it just gives people more things to it just gives people an overview of what you do right and this is what i was talking about cover photo it recently won like this um top three medical laboratory scientists in nigeria so he included that obviously it's something to show off things like that Another thing I have skipped now that I just remembered is your about, yes. So with about, you can obviously include your 50 word summary, right? But it also gives room for you to like talk about other things you probably want to talk about. I've seen a lot of people that use, that try to come from a story angle and be like, oh, when I was 10, I've always been interested in robots, things like that. I don't think, well, Later on in life, you will know what's really suits you. But for now, let's just stick to our 50 word summary and the other things you want to talk about. So this is Gabriel's about pretty much. It, this is a lot, right? But he's someone that is really, really experienced. So it makes more sense that he has included a lot of things. So he's also like the founder of MedLab Convo. He talked about how like his organization has like 5,000 plus subscribers across Africa, Canada, USA things like that it's pretty much talking about is um achievement but like summarized brief in summary things like that so after your 50 word summary you might want to probably include things that interest you some of the things you've done but is readable right um um you can also include this is also a feature i think of the creators i am um, creators type like the creators account on linkedin where you can have like open to work on your profile picture. And then you can also include the things you are interested in working on. Yeah. So, so like um Stephanie and Gabriel obviously have like lots of experience, right? So I wanted to show that first. Let's not be scared, let's not panic. It doesn't have to look like theirs, right? But it's just a good way to like see how people really optimize LinkedIn. I think that's what I really wanted to show this like really good so in three four years when you already have like so much experience you will really know how to optimize your linkedin so um yeah okay so so for instance now he's a hp hr journal fellow something like that so this is pretty much a screenshot of him on their page on their website so even if it's just for a while and they probably removed him from the website he already has like um an evidence for that and included that he has so many experience like i said he's super experienced and stuff like that and these are like certification skills uh -huh, recommendations from people courses so these are like people that are really know how to optimize linkedin so now let's go to someone who is just like fresh just graduated and is working so this is Nabil, right? His about is obviously more than 50 words so because by now he, after he has included that, he already knows like he's working already. So he knows other things that he's 
familiar with his abilities and things like that. So that's what's making the about more like robust. Then for his experience, he's currently a data engineer at this. He was a full stack developer these days, education. You can also see that this person included, even if he didn't include the relevant, the courses, because you know there is room for courses down, down, or he decided to include his under education, which works too. Then education to 10 academy. He talked about, he said, a 12 week intensive online program where trainees are faced with this, this, this. And then, hmm, where is my course running to? Okay. Aha. Then he talked about things that was treated during the 10 academy. For the CV, I remember like commenting on people that they should include key courses taught in undergrad. So if you just have a BS, right, there are some key courses that if you don't have a background knowledge in them, you cannot really pursue that degree, right? So say for computer scientists, I want to believe if you don't do like applied mathematics or statistics. You're not moving anywhere. So things like that. And for the 10 academy, so you want to just talk and um, mention like three to five concepts or topics that were treated during the training. So Python programming, things like that. He has also included that I was among the top three talents and graduated with distinction. Wonderful. So things like that. You won't know yet until you graduate, right? But I don't think you should worry about that. The most important thing here is to make sure your LinkedIn is looking good enough, consistent, all the sections, all the necessary sections are filled. They are not spelling errors. We can't afford to be making spelling errors. You can ask someone to proofread for you. You can take your time to read, read, read. And then for his contact info, I'm sure he's going to have like his Gmail there, GitHub portfolio and things like that. So what else am I missing out? So skills. So like for, for a beginner um, LinkedIn user, this is a very interesting, a great um, example to look at. But the reason, like I said, the reason why I showed Gabriel and Stephanie on is because I really wanted to say that there is more to link, there is so much you can. And do it in here. And I'm sure by now you also know they are like some of your favorite LinkedIn accounts that you go to and just see their posts and say, wow, this is super. really good things like that so let me just look at the careers manual for a moment to see if i'm not missing out anything so on that 3.8 i believe Okay, well, my course has refused to go down. <laughs> okay, I think it has listened to me now. I give up. Um, so 
so I guess that's that on um, in terms of LinkedIn, right? So take your time, like there is an extension of C, fill in the section and read through. Yeah. So any any questions? Um, so are there any questions? Um, So it sounds like we can endorse each other for sure. Yes, you can. I think with time, so because by the time everybody starts, including like Ken Academy under the education, right? It's just the way the algorithm works, right? People. That. People that um that like are associated with an academy start to pop up, then you just like take a look at their page and then you can just enter some of their skills to write. So I think I'm going to prepare a question since nobody has a question. Abel, I don't think I understand your question. Can you share the presentation document? There is no particular except you mean the charisma. No. So now my question in like five, ten minutes for on the how best do you think you can optimize your LinkedIn page? Aside like things I've mentioned, how best do you think you can like make like good days out of having a LinkedIn account? Anybody can just like raise their hand and share. Everyone of us, like, obviously, we're not like new to LinkedIn, but now that we're really getting to like, this just at phase, I'm trying to like it's like every resources we have. Besides, like going to like the job, um, the posting website, like, thinking how, how best you can implement that page in such that we get to see things that we're looking for. 
Obviously, you don't know them yet, but you can just like searching junior entry level or junior data engineer entry level data engineer. And when like names pop up, right, you see if the profile this person is someone you like or if their own niche really aligns with what you want, you can like give them a follow. Okay, look. Oh, sorry. I, I was going to say that we can no, no, link our GitHub page, uh, you know, also our new accounts into the, uh, into the meeting and featured, uh, featured sections. Sorry, was that audible? I'm not sure I need the book. Maybe can I type it in the book? I'm not sure I need the book anymore. Please um, type what you said in the book. So essentially what I was saying is um, when you like search for like these roles that you know you yourself will be interested in and you see like profiles you really like, you can um give them a follow. By follow you like interested in the things they'll post, then you can like it's them with connect and that way it just aligns, they are going just well because you're interested in web three people. Web three people will be popping up on your page. You're interested in machine people, they'll pop up. You're interested in data engineer, they'll pop up, things like that. Yeah, another thing is also like to react to posts that you fancy. So if you see someone that's posted something about um data and even anything, it might even about the words, it might just be about maybe the topics or like concept they're interested in. If you just like react to their post that way to the algorithm will just favor you and be like, okay, you like this. I'm going to show you more of this. So that's that. If you want to, Nabil's um LinkedIn is already linked in the Karaz manual. If you want to check out Stephanie, no, let me just put her name in the chat box. It's Stephanie Anani. 